This video will teach you everything you need to know about casting. What it is, when to use it, and maybe more importantly, when not to use it. This is a complete guide to casting in Unreal Engine. I've struggled for years using this one single node and this annoying object input. And I'm sure most of you watching right now are going through the exact same problem. I assure you after watching this video, your casting questions will be solved forever. We use casting to get access to another object so we can do something with that object, the receiver. Let's take this example. You have a dog and you want it to sit. And this dog has a sit function. When you call to the dog, you have access to all the dog's functions, including sit. Now, this all makes sense, I think, but where a lot of people get stuck is this input, the object input. To understand what and how we get this input variable, we first need to understand what casting is. Casting is basically Unreal asking, hey, is this object actually the type you think it is? Because when you plug something into a cast node, you're usually starting with a more general type, like an actor or a pawn. We are checking if this object is actually a dog, and if it is, the cast succeeds, and we can make the dog do anything we want. The reason you can plug a pawn or an actor into a cast for a dog character is because dog character inherits from those classes. In other words, it's a child of them. This is Unreal's hierarchy, and we want to check if our object we're casting to, our dog character, is inheriting from whatever we put in the object input. Probably a generic actor reference, but as you can see, we could also use a pawn or a character reference since, well, they're all related to this dog character. Oh yeah, little tip before we move on, in the top right corner, you can see what class this blueprint inherits from. This is the same class that you've selected when creating your blueprint. So how do we get this reference? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. Number one. There are a couple of get nodes to get access to core gameplay classes like get player character, get player controller, get player pawn, get game mode, get hot. If you want to cast your player character, you can just use the get player character node as the object input. Simple as that. Number two, use built in event context like overlapping with the collision. When colliding with something, you can use the other actor reference as the input of your cast. This is the actor that overlapped with your collision. Number three, if both of your objects are placed in the level and not spawned in dynamically, you can do this. Make an actor variable, make it instance editable and assign the other actor in the details panel. Then use the active variable you just created as the input of your cast. Number four, as a last resort, you can use the get all actors of class and use a tag. First, select your actor and in the details panel, add a tag. Then use a for each loop and use the node has tag. Fill in the tag and that should return the exact actor you want. Now, this is a last resort because it's very heavy on performance as it loops over all the actors of that class in the level. Use it with caution and only if the other methods described don't work. Now, the caveat of casting is that it creates a hard reference, this blue output pin. It's fine for things that are always loaded into memory, like your player, your HUD, your game mode, game instance, etc. But for any other object, it will transfer it from your hard drive to your memory. And as you might tell, your memory has a lot less space for things to store. And the worst part, all the references from that other object will also transfer with your cast. So if you go back to our dog example, all the other dogs it has played with, all the food it has eaten, and all the places it has been to, it will all load it into memory. You can probably tell how casting many times to things that aren't loaded in the level is bad and will create performance issues. If you right click on any asset in the content drawer, you can open the size map. In the size map, you can see how much space this object takes in your memory. We have two actors, BP Dog and BP Owner. BP Owner is a completely clean, fresh blueprint that I've just created. And the only thing I want to check is a variable in BP Dog that stores his hunger. If the dog is hungry, we feed it. Sounds easy enough, right? In BP Owner, we create a variable of type actor and check the instance editable box. We assign BP Dog in the details panel and we create a cast to BP Dog. This gives us all the functions in BP Dog, like sit, walk, etc. But as mentioned, it also creates a hard reference and will load BP Dog into our memory the moment this cast executes. If we now take a look at a size map of BP Owner, we can see it has loaded in BP Dog, which contains a lot more references, all bulking up size on our memory. So to recap, casting is perfect when you want to access something that's already loaded in memory, like your player or your HUD. 
But when you cast to anything not loaded, it will unnecessarily load it into memory and it will fill up your memory over time if you perform a lot of casts to unloaded objects. A great solution for this is using an interface. This doesn't create a hard reference, so the exit doesn't remain in memory and you can access any data or fire functions in the receiver actor. That, alongside other perks, is what makes interfaces great to use and in my next video I will make a complete guide to interfaces. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you in any way, I would appreciate any like or subscribe and I hope to see you in my next video about interfaces.